so it's been a little bit since I've done this. Um, today is September 4th and I'm going to start with the read of the day from the Al-Anon material. So <clears throat> today is as we let go of obsession, worry, and focusing on everyone but ourselves, many of us were bewildered by increasing calmness of our minds. We knew how to live in a state of crisis, but it often took a bit of adjustment to become comfortable with stillness. The price of serenity was the quieting of the constant metal, no, the constant mental chatter that had taken up so much time. Suddenly, we had lots of time on our hands and we wondered how to fill it. Having become more and more serene as a result of working the Al-Anon program, I was surprised to find myself still grabbing for old fears as as if I wanted to remain in crisis. I realized that I didn't know how to feel safe unless I was mentally busy. When I worried, I felt involved and therefore somewhat in control. As an exercise, my sponsor suggested that I try to maintain my inner stillness even when I felt scared or doubtful. As I did so, I reassured myself again and again that I was safely in the care of a power greater than myself. Today I know that sanity and serenity are the gifts I have received for my efforts and faith. With practice, I am learning to trust the peace. Today's reminder. Today's reminder is today I will relish with serenity. I know that it is safe to enjoy it. The quote is, be still and know that I am with you. Um, so I kind of want to see what today's subject is this is page 248 so at the back of the book it tells you um like different topics that the book is on like each day it has a like different topic whether it's for grieving um sponsorship like the different steps so i just want to see exactly what today specifically is about i want to say this is about obsession yeah so, I want to say that's what this is about. Honestly, I don't know. But, what I get out of this is keeping, keeping myself mentally busy all the time. Not to worry about the chaos. That's something that I do. Um, I actually had an incident happen this past week so keeping my mind busy all the time is something that i do to not always think about the addict here here i say so that's something that i always do is keep busy stay busy keep my mind going keep my mind busy so that way i'm not always focused on like oh my god what is the alcoholic doing um you know and i'm just gonna share this with you guys because if you watch my tiktoks you may have noticed that I've been posting some kind of like sad stuff, but um, the reason, and I haven't been to an Al-Anon meeting in two weeks because um, the ones that I go to are at 10 in the morning and I haven't been able to go in the last two weeks because I have my appointments at that time. So I'm hoping this coming week I can go. But anyways, back to what I was gonna say. So my father, I haven't seen my father in almost two months because um we don't live far away we live like 20 minutes away from each other but with my current health issues i cannot drive that far so as a father why do i need to drive to you bring your ass over here to me yeah so usually we hang out we eat we he takes me to barnes and noble and we just like chat whatever but because he's been broke and whatever and he changed jobs like we haven't hung out for the last two months so this past friday he called me drunk off his ass and my boundary with him is you know do not call me do not talk to me when you are like that because when he's like that he can say really hurtful things and i don't deserve that so when he called me drunk i could tell like i i was with my friend and i was like watch him be drunk and he was really drunk and i was like you know what i'm not dealing with this i was like call me when you're sober and i hung up in his face and <laughs> little did I know a couple, couple hours later little did I know that he would be calling me from jail 
and he called me but i was sleeping he called me from jail but i was sleeping and i was like okay like so i woke up and i was like oh my god this man i got a, a call from jail like who the fuck's gonna be calling me from jail aside from my father so you know i looked him up and he was in jail they let him out because you know for a dui charge as long as he didn't kill anybody they're not going to keep him they let him out and it was just a very emotional weekend for me just for the simple fact that this is not my dad's first rodeo and what bothered me about it is like you have money to go to a bar and drink and buy rounds for the people you're with but you don't have money to come and hang out with me that's what really has been bothering me because i'm just like okay and my main thing was like um you know i didn't i couldn't talk to him because he was in jail so my i was trying to get a hold of the sheriff and blah 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 my main thing was like okay who cares about you like i want to know did he hurt somebody physically like did he like what happened that's what i wanted to know because my dad has a tendency of drinking and driving and it's scary so thank thank god he didn't hurt anybody and yeah it's just really scary and back to this about you know keeping your mind busy that's something that i do a lot because i have to i have to understand it's not my fault that my dad's an alcoholic like it's not my fault it sucks that he's an alcoholic it sucks that i'm his only child and he doesn't he doesn't see me like i've been dealing with this my whole life i begged my dad when i was a little girl like daddy please if you love me stop drinking i don't love you i'm gonna drink like i've like and it's just sad because i'm at the point now where i'm not gonna keep playing this game with him i'm just i'm over it so this really it's like every time i open this book when i'm going through something i i hear something that i need to hear and you know what i was talking to my friend over the weekend and okay this is ugh, this is gonna make me cry let me sit right i was talking to my friend this weekend and you know he was like we were just talking and both of us come from a troubled background fucked up background you know and if you're seeing this i love you and thank you for talking to me this weekend you're the best babes but i was talking to my friend this weekend and i talked to my therapist about this but it's so different hearing it from another person that's been through what you've been through so i was talking to my friend and i was just explaining to him why i hold my dad to such a high regard and why i give him so many chances so as you guys know i was sexually abused for 11 years by my stepfather and when i came out about my story a lot of people didn't believe me like my mom was one of the main people that didn't believe me so when i went to go live with my dad he never questioned me he never doubted me like none of those things came to his head he just instantly believed me and even then he was an alcoholic like he's always been an alcoholic he, like but anyway that was all i needed from him and like i just needed like that that's for me why i put him on such a, a pedestal because he believed me and yes even though he's done a bunch of shitty crappy things as a father for me it's like he believed me when i needed him at my lowest point in my life like he was there for me and um not only that i'm dissociating not only that but my dad is an alcoholic yes but if i call him and I'm like, Dad, I'm in the hospital. He'll come. He will come. He'll be drunk off his ass and he'll come. That's not anything to brag about. But that's the thing. It's like we have a love-hate relationship because we've gone to fist fights before. We've literally had, had screaming matches before because of his alcoholism. I've poured his beers down the drain before. Like, I've, I've, I've done it all. Like, so it's just that's why i hold my father to such a high regard and my friend told me he was like <laughs> ah, this is the part that hurts he was like your dad did the bare minimum as a parent as a parent he did the bare fucking minimum and you know what i never fucking seen it like that i just seen it as like you know 
woe was me, like, my dad was there for me. I never really seen it like, oh my god, he did the bare minimum, like, what else can he do for me? I never seen it like that. So when my friend told me that, I was like, uh -huh. like, I wanted to cry because it's so fucking true. He did the bare fucking minimum as a parent. And he's still doing the bare fucking minimum. So, yeah. Next week, I'm gonna go to an Al Anon meeting because whew, I have lots to talk about. Lots, lo ow, lots, lots, lots to talk about. But yeah, that was just the read for today and the little share of the week. I'm not gonna promise y'all that I'm gonna do these every day because it's just, I'm not gonna be that consistent. I could try maybe once a week. But I already went two weeks without posting this, so I'm going to try once a week. Today's Wednesday, so maybe I can do one every Wednesday. But I'm not going to make promises because I'm not going to sit up here and lie to y'all. I'm just going to be honest. Like, every day is a busy day for me, and, like, I go through a lot of shit. And I like, like it said, I try to keep myself mentally busy. But thank you for listening. I hope you guys have a great day. Enjoy the rest of your week.